Hi everybody, it's Daphne and you're very welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for coming to spend some of your time with me today. Today I am going to do a little spotlight on um, eye makeup and how I do my eyeshadow and my liner for hooded I, I do have hooded eyes and they're very deep set and they're small eyes as well. So it's like a perfect storm. <laughs> so I thought that I would just share with you some of the techniques that I use um, I'm by no means a makeup artist. These are just things that work for me um, and I thought I would share them with you. So I suppose first off um, it would be uh, important to know the shape of your eye and as you can see from, I'm going to go in quite close, you can see my eye shape is quite small and um, quite deep set and hooded because you can see this part here. If it wasn't hooded I wouldn't have that bit but it is hooded, so I, they're not completely hooded, but they are hooded. And as I say, deep set and small. So can be a challenge for applying eye makeup, but it's taken me a long time to find um, techniques and um, a way of applying my shadows and my liner that I think actually works for me and brings my eyes out. Uh, because I really do think, you know, the eyes really are, I suppose, the focus of the face, really. Um, so some of the things that I do, um, I start off with prime, by priming my eyes before I apply any shadow. Now there's lots of ways you can prime your eyes. You can either use a dedicated eye primer. I have never used, I don't think I've ever used a dedicated eye primer. I've always used something like um, a MAC Paint Pot, Painterly or Soft Ochre, or I've used the Maybelline uh, Colour Tattoos in Creme de Rose. That's one that I have used regularly. I'm, I, I'm out of it at the moment, it's just it dried up. Um, and at the moment what I'm using is my Sculpted by Amy Complete Cover-Up um, Concealer and that's it there. You'll have seen me use this on many occasions and you can see that it is well used. So I will use this to prime my eyes. Now I have everything done except my eye, my eye shadows. So I put a little of this on my finger and I just pat it down onto my lid and I bring it right up because what it'll do is it will even out, you know, any redness or veins, as you can see there. And then it, uh, where I have applied it, it has kind of given me a more even canvas with, on which to apply my shadows. Now, you could also apply this with a brush. I just find it handy to do it with my finger and also the warmth of my finger will help it to blend seamlessly. I also will put a tiny little bit on my finger and just sort of run it under the bottom lashes because if you're going to apply liner, especially powder liner, shadow liner, it can help to give it a little bit more staying power. Now I'm not concealing under my eyes yet but as you can see that that has evened things out. When it comes to shadows, I think there's lots of ways that you can approach them. You can have a one and done, you can use um, powder shadows, cream shadows, you can use pigments. I tend to go more for matte shadows and I tend to go more as if you've been watching me for any length of time, you know I tend to go more for neutral shades, warmer shades. So I have all my little customizable um, MAC, the, the Pro Palette um, shadows and I've made up a little palette here to show you um, what would be, I suppose, a, a simple way of applying the four different colours and where each colour would you where each colour would be applied to the eye. Um, these are, as I say, these are all Mac shadows, and as you can see, this one is a, very much a favourite. Um, I will list the colours below. So if you were starting out to do a look with these shades, um, you need some brushes. Now I have lots and lots of brushes that I use, um, but I have picked out the ones that I, that's all my brushes there, that's all my eye brushes. Um, but I've picked out the ones that I use regularly and you can probably taper that down to your flat shader, um, a fluffy brush for blending and for applying color and maybe a smaller brush for detailed work, a smudger brush, a liner brush. So so we'll say that I'm going to do a look with this little palette. This is Orb 
Um, this is Malt. This one is, the dark brown one is Corduroy, and I think, well, I'll have to take that out again, that one is Quarry. And these are so handy because they pop in and out. I have a big palette, as you, if you've watched me before, you'll know, and each little, they're pro palettes, or pro refills, um, and they so the one that you the ones that you use the most you can replace them very easily and not be stuck with colours that you don't use, and these are all magnetic so they just pop in. I've, I have um, a duo there that I use as well, and if I wanted to I could pop them all back into the large palette which holds 15 shadows on one side and 15 shadows on the other side. So it's a great way of building your collection, doing it slowly. They're not too expensive. I think these are 10 euro per shadow but if you were to buy them from Mac in the little um you know in the little case they'd be about 20 euro at least uh, usually what you do is the lightest color you put as your highlight so maybe you know on your brow bone um you could also use it on the center of your lid the second lightest goes all over your lid the second darkest will go into your crease and the darkest will go into your outer V. So I'm going to just show you the way I do that. So I'm gonna take my flat shader brush. I'm gonna go into this color here, which is malt, I have to try and remember. And I'm just going to load up my brush. Always tap it off because you'll see from that that there's some extra. But we'll talk about fallout as well. Um, and I'm just going to pat that on and the concealer that I've applied is going to give that hold to my shadow. So just patting, I'm not rubbing it, I'm not doing any kind of windshield wiper motions or anything like that. Now if you want, you can just apply it to your lid or you can take it up further. I'm just gonna apply it just above my crease or just into my crease rather. And again, you can see I'm just placing the shadow. I'm not rubbing or swishing. So it's giving me a good base for my eye look. And the same on the other side, pat, pat, pat. Take it up into the crease. I wouldn't, with this color, I wouldn't go any higher. As you can see, I have just taken it as far as my crease. And what I do all the time when I'm doing my eye look is I will have a face cloth and I have my spray, my Ella and Joe squeaky clean brush cleaner. So there's just a face cloth, that an old face cloth. This is invaluable, I spray the cloth and you can see the color on that there I just rub that into the cloth and it cleans the brush leaves it hygienically clean it will be dry in two minutes and I'll be able to use it again and I'll have no muddying of color so I always have that at the ready I'm gonna go in to the second darkest color because I'm gonna put that in my crease and I'm going to use this little um, tapered uh, brush, which is a Zoeva, it's number 231. It's a petite, looks petite crease. So I'm gonna go into this one here, that's Quarry, which is a kind of a taupey color. Um, it can pull a little lavender as well. So I'm gonna load up my brush, always tap off. Now. One of the tips that I've read about is that if you have hooded eyes as I do, this eye is slightly more hooded, instead of closing the eye and putting it into what seems like your crease, you keep your eye open and you look straight ahead into your mirror. In this case, I'm looking into the camera and I will find my crease there so that when I actually open, when my eye is actually open, you can still see it. You see that? Whereas if I was to apply that color in here and then I open my eye, you won't see it. So I'm just, again, keeping my eye open, looking straight ahead and just 
finding that crease just there. And you just keep applying until you get the depth of colour that you want. Now you can see that that has made my crease recede a little bit which is what it's supposed to do and the lighter colour makes the lid pop a little bit. The motion that you use when you're applying your crease colour is like a windshield wiper motion. So we pat, I patted the colour onto my lid and now I'm doing the windshield wiper motion to build the colour in my crease. And when I'm blending it I'm just starting where the colours meet and I'm not lifting my brush and making tiny tiny little circular motions and I'm blending it out and then where the colour ends and I have no no shadow I just blend 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 so that you can it's seamless then it doesn't look like you've got lines at all and if you look and say oh gosh that's not blended right just go back in and do it again I'm going to clean my brushes because I probably will use those brushes again in this eye look and I don't want to muddy any colours together so I'm just going to clean those off. For my outer V I am going to use this one which is called corduroy so it's a nice chocolatey brown and I'm going to because my eyes are small and so deep set I'm going to use this small um, tapered crease brush and straight in build up the colour tap off the excess now the thing with eye colours is not to be afraid to be dramatic with them because you can always blend them out but go you know, can build the colour. You don't have to go in with one big smudge but you can build the colour. Um, so I'm going to find my outer V. So it's like, it's like a backward seven. So I'll go to the outer crease just there again keeping my eye open and looking straight at the mirror. And then a little bit on the outer edge of the lid, as you can see there, upwards, so that it forms like a backward seven. Can you see that? Now, depending on how deep I want the colours, I may just leave it at that and blend it out, or I might apply some more and intensify the colour a little bit. And if it looks muddy, don't worry, because Blending is key. Can you see that? So I'll do the same with the other. Keep looking forward. Go to the outer crease. Like that. And then find my outer lid and kind of bring the line up to meet the line, uh, the shadow at the crease and you have your little backwards seven which does look a little bit muddy and it always happens that one with me anyway particularly one eye I can do better than the other it looks better as I'm applying the color and the other one looks muddy and it's like oh I've done it wrong it can always be corrected so if I'm happy with that color or rather if I'm happy with that intensity I can just blend it out and that is the key to all eye looks. Believe me, <laughs> I've made many, many mistakes. So I'm gonna take um, that little fluffy brush again and starting exactly where the colors, where the two colors meet and I'm not even lifting my brush. I'm doing little circular motions outwards. Can you see that? I'm working outwards and then upwards into the crease. You never want to work downwards because it's going to pull the eye down and you know for ladies of a mature more mature age we want to lift the face so you do outwards and upwards in your blending motions and you can see there that that's blending out nicely and I don't want to have any lines at all and the same on the other side start where the colors meet don't lift the brush and just keep doing little circular motions upwards and outwards. And for me, it's this eye that always 
goes a little bit funny because I think my brow bone actually is lower than it is here. Things seem to catch a little bit. So you can see that there. Now, if I want to apply some shadow to the under part of my um, my bottom lid, on just under my, my bottom lashes, the same brush that I didn't clean because I'm going to use the same colour, it's a small tapered brush, I'm just going to go into that dark brown and looking up as much as I can, just pull that under there. Now you can see that I'm sort of joining the two at the outer edge from the from the bottom lashes up to my outer V so that it, it looks it's all joined in. And go back in with your blender brush and just blend that. The only colour I haven't used so far is this one. That's called Orb. It's the lightest colour of the four. So I'm going to use my flat shader brush that I've cleaned off and I am going to just use that to highlight my brow bone. And I'm just going to pat it on. I'm going to go back and use that same blending brush and just blend outwards into that lightest colour. And because I've kept the darkest shadow on the outer part of my lid and my outer crease, it makes my lid space look like there is more than there actually is. Now, when it comes to liner, this little tiny liner brush is, um, it's a real techniques. And what I do is I will take my rose water, which I need to refill. I'm just going to spray that onto a cotton pad, wet the top of the little liner brush. I'm going to take my darkest shade, which is corduroy, and I'm going to line the top of my um, top lashes, just right at the lash line. Kind of patting it on. I'm not do. I'm not doing it in a one single sweep because I think that's harder to do if you are using um, a shadow to use to use as your liner. You could join the two together from the bottom, from your bottom lashes. But what I tend to do is I will find where the lashes join, right in that corner, and at the angle that your bottom lashes would go up. That that is the angle at which, if you want to put a little wing, that's how you would do it. Now this brow bone comes down further than this one. The, br the bone is lower on this side. So you can see there that it's skipped a little. So what I would do is I would just close my eye like that because I've drawn the line when my eye was closed and I will just join those two together like that. And then again with the wet brush back into the brown shade, you can kind of join the two together. So where that little crease is at your bottom and top lashes, find the angle at which your the line would go up from your bottom lashes and that's the angle that you would use for your wing and then just join the two together. Now I'm after making that a little bit bigger, thicker, so I have to do the same on this side. Yeah, I'm gonna take that lovely little tapered brush and I'm going to just soften that there. So that's one way to do a wing. 
obviously you could use a pencil. I'll show you on this side. This side tends to tear a little bit and if the lid is anyway moist it won't hold. Right, so I'm following the same line and what I'm going to do then is with that same little brush but this time dry. Go back into the powder shadow, tap it off and actually line over your pencil and that will help it to last. I always leave my um, concealer, my under eye concealer till the end um, and this one as you've seen me use many times is the Inglot by Mora Elements Collection Endless Beauty Wand in Aria Glow and I put a very small amount just here and I often find that a clean finger <laughs> not one laden with, uh, which I have done, laden with, you know, eyeshadow colours, um, to just press that in because the heat of my finger will help it to blend in without settling into lines, um, into fine lines. I find that um, curling my lashes really helps because it just lifts them. I have very short lashes there, my natural lashes there, and you can barely see them. Um, so it gives them a bit of curl and a bit of lift. These are not expensive curlers. I think these are from Primark. But make sure that you have cleaned them off from the previous use because if you, when you use them and you have liner on, sometimes they take a little bit of liner with them. And you can see that that's given them a little bit of lift and curl. So I'll do the other one and I'm off camera. <laughs> you can barely see that they've been curled, but they have. So I'll just apply um, some mascara. This is the Sosu by Suzanne Jackson. Look at the difference and that's barely one coat. You, of course you can go in with um, a further coat. If you want your eye look to last that little bit longer, you could of course apply a little, little translucent powder. Now I would use a small brush, That's this is um, a Primark brush that I often use for blending. Go into your um, translucent powder, tap off as much as you can and you can just, that's actually going to, um, I'll be able to take that little smudge off. So just apply it over your shadows. It's not going to change the colours but it is going to help to um, give things a little bit of staying power. Now where you have applied your concealer, go back after a couple of minutes and you might see there's a little settling in the creases. I don't know if you can see that but there, there is, you can see it there. That's going to happen. I don't care what anybody says, no matter how good the concealer is. It's going to, it is, if there's any little lines, it's going to settle. So go back in with your, I just kind of gently stretch that out. Go back in with my ring finger, which is the gentlest, and just pat that in on both sides. Then a little bit, tiny little bit of um, setting powder and just go in like that. This powder does not dry out the under eye area. It really doesn't. Because I know some of you have been asking me about um, products that won't dry out your under eye area. And I have to say, this is fabulous for setting anywhere. Um, and I will use it just, you know, just in general places as well where I feel that I need a little bit more staying power. But it's really gentle for the under eye. It doesn't cause any drying out or anything like that. And it just gives everything longer staying power. So they are the little tips and tricks that I use when I'm applying my eyeshadow. And you can use those tips with any colours of shadow. Once you know which colours to put where, the lightest on the lightest goes on your brow bone, the second lightest on your lid the second darkest in your crease and the darkest in your outer crease and outer V and under your lashes. Once I kind of got used to doing that routine, I could play around with um, different looks um, because I realised that that's what's opening my eyes. If you compare to um, when I had no eye makeup on, I think there's quite a difference. Um, and of course, when you look in the mirror, you might think, oh, there's a little something that I need to adjust. I can see it here. 
I don't have as much, there's more shadow there than there is there. So you can go back in with your little small, which you can see there's still some, I didn't clean this one off yet, and just correct that. But really the key to eye looks is blending. Blend, 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 blend. <laughs> if in doubt, blend more. Um, it is a very good tip if you clean off your brushes like I have been doing. Take down the hair. They won't look quite so severe. And um, the lipstick I'm wearing today is Charlotte Tilbury Amazing Grace. You can just about see the writing there. Um, and it's a beautiful colour. And because the eye look is quite, you know, it's quite warm toned and neutral, I can afford to go a little bit more daring with my lipstick. And to finish, I'm going to use a little spritz of the Inglot Refreshing Face Mist. This one here, which is gorgeous. It smells divine, uh, it's very natural, and it just gives everything a little bit more lasting power. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Let me know what you think. So hope you're having a lovely day and I will see you very soon in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.